à tous de DDO. Attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Top. H0 moins 4 minutes. And we have the range operations manager there has just announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence, the last four minutes during which the computers are controlling all the final operations in the countdown. Well, I'm joined in the commentary box by Dr. Paul McNamara. Paul is the project uh, scientist for Lisa Pathfinder. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, Paul, what is a project scientist? So a project scientist is, uh, or my role is to manage the science of the mission. So I work both with the engineering team who are building the hardware and with the science team who are actually going to start using it when we launch. Well, we're very lucky to have you because you're an expert on gravity um, and the nature of the universe. And uh, you've spent many, many years working on this. So yes. thank you very much. Um, we've uh, been looking at mission control, but we do have other launch control, other control centers. As I said earlier, this is launch control. There are several teams working in here. One is responsible for all the operations on the ground. Uh, they coordinate with mission control for the final op authorization to launch. I should say that these teams are involved solely with the launcher and their quality team ensures that they follow procedures correctly. And one of the other teams we have in here are responsible for the flight readiness of the launch vehicle. Uh, they oversee all the operations from assembly of the launcher all the way through to the actual launch itself. And their quality assurance team, they ensure that everyone adheres to the procedures which are put in place. And we have another team, which is the health, safety and environment team, uh, which makes sure that all the operations are carried out according to very strict rules, guaranteeing the utmost safety at the base. And those guys and girls are about three kilometers from this pad in a protected bunker. Right, Paul, you have spent uh, nearly 20 years, I believe. Just a bit more than that, yes. <laughs> working on this, so I think it's about time you went outside to watch your launch. So off you go to the viewing station and you, you can tell us all about it. Will do. One minute and 40 seconds to launch. Vega is standing tall there on the pad. A few other important people here in Mission Control. This is Jean-Christophe Delaunay. He's the Mission Director and uh, he coordinates the day-to-day -day activities at the launch pad. And then we have the range operations manager who you saw earlier, John Ha, or Jon, he's Norwegian, and he's in charge of coordinating the launch base systems during the final the countdown. Attention for H0 minus one minute. And we're going to be hearing his voice throughout the flight. Top, H0 minus one minute. We are one minute to launch. We're orbiting the trailblazing gravity hunter, Lisa Pathfinder, for the European Space Agency. Our very best wishes to all the teams at ESA, to the Industrial Consortium led by Airbus Defence and Space, and of course to everybody in ESA's control centre, ESOC, who are waiting to take charge of their spacecraft. Our very best wishes and good luck as we watch the launch. Tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top. Allumage et décollage. And there she goes. We are off. Vega lit up the light night sky there momentarily as it uh, disappeared behind the clouds, heading up over the Amazon rainforest and uh, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. Here on the equatorial coast of South America, we're now heading east towards Africa. And 
at least the Pathfinder has started her journey. Vega is powering its way across the sky using the first stage there. And we can hear the sound as it arrives here at the Dynasty Mission Control Center. He's telling us that everybody, everything is going according to plan. And we can hear it rumbling across the sky. We're uh, burning the P-80 first stage here. 80 is the mass of the propellant, 89 tons. And the first three stages are the propulsion phase, getting us away from the gravity of the Earth. Gravity, of course, being the very thing that Lisa Pathfinder is going to be helping us to investigate. On the bottom of the screen, you can see on the left-hand side is our altitude, 47, 48 kilometers. He says everything's normal. The distance from the pad and the bottom right-hand side is our speed in kilometers per second. So we've lost the P-80 first stage. It's burnt to its propellant. We don't need it anymore. It's fallen away and we are shedding weight. We've ignited the Z-23 second stage. That's going to burn for about one minute and 30 seconds. Z means Zafiro, which is Italian for a type of wind, like the Sirocco or the Mistral. And of course, 23 is the amount of solid propellant that is contained inside the tank. It burns 23 tons of propellant in one and a half minutes. You can see the fairing is the nose of the vehicle. If you look at that image there on the right-hand side of the screen, that CGI image of, of what's happening in space, the fairing is the nose. You've got a good look at it there of the vehicle, the pointy bit at the front. That's protecting our satellites from the rigors of the launch, notably the acoustic vibrations at liftoff. Very loud, you can just imagine. And of course, friction, because we are flying through the dense part of the atmosphere right now. That's about 120 kilometers thick. And we're coming to the edge of it now. We've lost the Z23 engine. And we're about to switch on the Z9. De Z9. There we go. And Paul Separation de la just come back. Paul, we've lost the fairing. We don't need that anymore. You saw the launch, and now you can see your baby for the first time exposed to space. How are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> it's hard to put words into it. When you see that light up, and it just starts to rise into the air, knowing that our little satellite is sitting in there is just unbelievable. Uh, you've worked hard for this for many years. It's fantastic. We just everybody look at the right-hand side of the screen. You can see the satellite there with a flat section at the front. Paul, can you uh, just explain to us what we're looking at? Sure, the flat part we're looking at there is the solar array. That's how we generate all the power on a satellite. Being in space, the only way to get power is from uh, the sunlight. Uh, and now what we can see is just a bit underneath the solar array is the gold part is our uh, spacecraft itself. That is Lisa Pathfinder. It's so a this nicer is the picture now. To the left, if you like. To the left of the, the top part, the flat part. And the part under the gold part that looks like it's wrapped up in aluminium foil, that is our engine we use to get us out to our final orbit uh, towards the sun, towards uh, uh, 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. And then to the left of that, you could see the upper stage there, um, and the uh, the Vega launcher. So this was five minutes and 17 seconds ago. Uh, Paul, what was it like? It went behind the clouds pretty quickly? It still, we saw glimpses of it as it was going up there. Uh, it felt like I was back in Scotland with all the clouds all over the place, but even still, it was still amazing just to see that whole, that bit there where it just lights up the sky. It's Phenomenal. It's quite something, and of course, Vega flies very quickly compared to some of the larger launchers. So people who are used to seeing uh, the Ariane launcher take off, that 
is a lot heavier, of course, so it's a, it's a slower it moment. So here we go. We are five minutes now. Uh, five, coming up to six minutes into the launch, and we're uh, switching off the Z9 engine. Don't need that anymore. Uh, Lisa Pathfinder at the front there on its journey. It's quite a revolutionary. Okay, so we've picked up the signal at the tracking station in Natal. That's on the northeastern coast of Brazil. You can see our flight path there taking us out across the Atlantic. Uh, yeah, I was just saying it's a quite a... And there we go. We've lost the, uh, the uh, Z9 engine there. So uh, we're coming up now to the uh, to the next phase in the in the flight. Um, the main propulsion phase is over. We've got ourselves away from the gravity of the Earth, and we're going to start the next phase, which is de la avant le boost à boom. to drop off uh, the satellite in the correct position. And here you can see that the Avum upper stage is starting an orientation phase. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. I was uh, uh, attempting to talk about Lisa Pathfinder there. She's quite revolutionary, isn't she? Yeah, Lisa Pathfinder is the first step of observing the universe in a whole new way. It's not using light, it's Terre using gravity. De la télémesure lanceur par la station de test the technology. Sorry, it's allowing us to test the technology required to build a large gravitational wave detector in the future. And um, the, we've just switched on the engine of the Avum upper stage. Uh, Paul and I say Avum because we are Brits, but um, a lot of Europeans and French uh, in particular who, uh, who, are who are in control of this particular launcher are calling it the Avum. Yes. Yes. And we picked up the uh, signal there at the Galio tracking station that is at the Ghana Space Center. So Lisa Pathfinder is um, heading off to a position in space which is 1.5 one million kilometers yes. uh, above the Earth. And the Avum's job is to take it there. It's going to take two months to get there. Um, it's, it's really blazing a trail, isn't it, Lisa Pathfinder? But we can only test the technologies that uh, she's going to test in space. Why is that? So what we're trying to do with Lisa Pathfinder is to put a body into free fall. Really what that means is there's no forces acting on it apart from gravity. Now, if we were sitting in the Earth, then Earth's gravity would actually wipe out what we're trying to measure. So we want to be outside so we can't even see the Earth or the Moon or any other forces. So the only way to do that is to go into space. And that's where we are headed now. You can see on the bottom left-hand side, we're 600 and, uh, 264 kilometers high. Our distance in the middle is the distance from the pad. Let's find out a little bit more about Lisa Pathfinder. Before trying something new, you need to test the technology first. And that's exactly what Lisa Pathfinder will be, a technology demonstration mission. It will become the first gravitational laboratory in space for fundamental physics. And it will test the technologies that will be needed to detect and measure gravitational waves. 